everybody, welcome back to CSS 3 in 30 Days. Today is day 11 and all about Internet Explorer, unfortunately so. Now before we go forward, Internet Explorer has taken a lot of liberty to try and improve their software and they're on like version 15 or something crazy right now. I don't really pay attention because I don't really care, but hopefully you're watching this at some point in the future where none of this is an issue anymore. However, there are some people who still use Internet Explorer 9 and below, which is crazy talk, but Luckily in CSS3 and CSS, we can uh, we can kind of make some accommodations. And uh, in my case, I just like to remove the styles for those browsers altogether. So I'm gonna show you how to do that with something called conditional comments. Jump over here and check this out. You can see here, I'm gonna show you what a conditional comment looks like and what it does. So basic conditional comment looks like this. If IE and it's wrapped in basically an HTML comment, and then you can put any HTML in between, including links to CSS, like a different IE style sheet. Uh, and then you close it off like so. You could select different types of browsers, uh, Internet Explorer versions rather, six, seven, eight, and nine by using the following conditional comments. You can use a specific uh, conditional comment for uh, say a version of Internet Explorer or lower. So if LTE stands for less than or equal to, IE six, seven, eight, or nine, that styles Internet Explorer six or less, seven or less, eight or less, nine or less. Or rather, those browsers register those comments. And then we have uh, the opposite of that, which is greater than or equal to. So you could style greater than or equal to IE six, seven, eight, or nine. Or I just like to use the, uh, the catch-all if IE, so that's Internet Explorer six through nine. And that will be recognized and rendered by those specific browsers. So jump over here in our code editor and all we have in day 11, you can go ahead and download that is an index file and an ie.css file. I'm gonna run through them, show you what's going on and then we can be on our merry way and not think about IE anymore. So right here you can see in the head of our HTML, I have a conditional comment that's selecting IE six through nine and I'm just adding an IE style sheet. So only Internet Explorer six through nine will recognize and render that comment and then we'll tie into our CSS file, which looks like this. Basically, I'm just, I did an asterisk selector, which is a catch all everything. I'm removing the background color and line height, resetting that really aggressively, removing the course files button and the level two heading uh, tab that sits on the side of, of the container in the web page that we have here. And then I found a complete CSS reset at this link, that's just an aggressive reset. It just resets everything to just basic black and white text. And that's all I want for IE six through nine because I don't wanna to have to accommodate those browsers, so I just show them my markup, which if it's semantic, they should be able to read it and get the meaning of the website anyway. So uh, let me just go back to our browser or index.html file here, and I wanna show you one last thing I've done. Right under the conditional comments, I've put conditional comments through from six through nine and basically just some text. So if you're, this is a test method. So if you're viewing it from IE six, seven, eight or nine, you'll see the proper, the respective comment for the browser that you are using. So why don't we test that? I've taken the liberty of uploading this to my website on my domain. And uh, there's a web page, website called netrenderer.com where you can basically get a screen grab of an IE browser of a live web page. So if you go to net renderer and type in bradhussey.ca slash dev slash ew, e -W -W, uh, and I'm choose Internet Explorer nine because for some reason seven and eight don't work on my website, but nine does. And if I hit render, basically what's going to happen is it's gonna take a few seconds and then it's gonna give me a rendering screenshot of what Internet Explorer nine, how it sees my website. So here you go, it's just basic black and white. It's got the text, you can read it. Uh, and then if you notice here, you're viewing with Internet Explorer 9. You can't see that in my Chrome browser because obviously it's not IE, but here it is. You're viewing with Internet Explorer 9 and the styles are completely wiped so that all they can do is read it. Perfect, that's all I really need. So I know that was kind of a quick lesson, but feel free if you really care to utilize this strategy on your own blogs and websites uh, if you just want to remove the styles altogether, you could do simply what I did. Or if you want to take a little bit more of an accommodating approach, you can do that as well. Play around. There are a number of different uh, browsing te browser testing tools such as Browser Stack, uh, but that's paid. Whereas NetRenderer is just a screen grab of what IE 
sees your website, uh, how it sees your website. So really that's kind of all. I didn't want to spend a lot of time on this because it's quite simple, conditional comment, an IE CSS file, and just remove the styles. Pretty straightforward. Uh, I hope you're having a great day. And tomorrow I'll see you in day 12, which is going to be fun. We're going to be playing around with some CSS3 variables. What?